so if you're here on my channel, you're probably just like, hey man, show me the exploit, let's let's play with this, and, and we definitely will, but I just want to touch briefly on what this exploit is, in case you don't know. Um, so Print Nightmare essentially is an issue in the print spooler within all versions of Windows. Uh, this could be Windows Server, Workstations, whatever. And Microsoft had released a patch last Tuesday uh, that they thought fixed this issue, but it turns out that there was basically a workaround, like they, they didn't fix it fully. Uh, so new public exploits have came out. There's actually two different CVEs that people are kind of interchangeably calling Print Nightmare. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of awesome proof of concept code out there and public exploits that, that you can use and that attackers are using. So it's really important to be aware of this. Um, two of my favorite to look at is, uh, here's one of them, and this is gonna be the first one we play with. So John Hammond made this along with Caleb Stewart. Uh, they wrote this all in PowerShell, which I think is amazing because it means we don't have to mess with a Linux system. We don't have to install and pack it. We don't have to do any of that. Uh, if you have access to a system and you want to escalate your privileges from a standard regular user and you want to take over and get admin rights, this is your go-to. Just open up this PowerShell command, uh, I guess, sorry, open up this PowerShell script, run this, and you'll be able to execute code as system. It's amazing. The only downfall with this is it's a local privilege escalation, so you're not going to be able to leverage this to execute code on a remote system, like a domain controller. And that's where this exploit gets really, really powerful, right? Because if you have a print spooler running on that domain controller, right now, you could do something like this to actually go ahead and, and execute code on that domain controller. And you can make that code say something like, run this DLL that loads a meterpreter reverse shell or bind shell or whatever you want to do, and you can fully compromise the environment, and all you need is access to the LAN, as well as a set of any user's credentials in the domain. Literally, it could be that low-level intern that you enabled for two days and forgot to turn off, right? And, and that account is essentially a domain admin when this when this is present in the environment. So keep that in mind. These are what we're going to be playing with. I'll have links in the description if you want to go take a look at them. One more thing, feel free to come check me out on Twitter. I'm looking to hit a thousand followers and I'd love to see you and be a part of it. So cool. Thanks guys. We'll uh, let's start playing with these. All right, first up, we're gonna look at this PowerShell guy. So I'm gonna open him up in a new tab. And if we scroll through, we can see we just need to import our module here. We can run invoke nightmare and it's gonna automatically do this as a default where it creates a new user named admin with a password, a password. And again, this is gonna be a local administrator on the account. This is not going to do anything on the domain, uh, but you can run this against like a, you know, the same domain join machine and get admin rights to a domain machine, which is amazing, right? Because then you could start dumping the SAM, you could use that for lateral movement throughout the environment, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So this is a great privilege escalation volume that's, that's easy to run. Uh, you can also get crazy and you can do some additional things like here you can load a malicious DLL payload um, so that way you can jump straight to uh, a bind shell or possibly even a reverse shell and get a interpreter session or maybe install some other C2 if you'd like to. So lots of lots of possibilities here but for our case excuse me we're just going to use the default so here's all the code we'll copy this down and let's go take a look at our lab. So here we've got a Kali Linux machine don't need to worry about that at the moment. Um, over here, we're looking at the domain controller of the environment. Um, also, again, we're not gonna worry about that at this time. And then finally, I've got load disk space, oops, on this machine, which is gonna be our victim on the network. And I have zero bytes free. Let me fix that, one sec. Okay, so I signed out, signed in as a different user, freed up a little bit of free, uh, disk space. We don't need a ton to be able to pull this off. So we should be in pretty good shape. Um, let's go ahead and look at what it is that we're doing and take a look around this box. So first of all, let's open up a PowerShell window and you can see we're getting hit with a UAC prompt where it's asking us to elevate. So this is a good indication that we do not have admin rights and we can verify that. We can come into a regular PowerShell window. I'll make this a bit bigger. 
And then we can just do something like net user, and that'll show out the users on the system. If we do a who am I, we see that we're signed in as MBA D Lillard. Now this is a local D Lillard account on the machine, but we could do a net user D Lillard and see that we're just a part of the users group. We're not a part of the administrators group. And if we do the same, we could look at our domain version of the user. And again, we're just a part of domain users and we don't have any local group memberships on the system. So we do not have admin rights in, in any in any way at all. Um, so this is a perfect opportunity for us to go ahead and take a look at that exploit. So let's open this guy up and I'm just gonna copy all this have it in my clipboard and let's write this to a file real quick maybe I'll throw it into I like to put it if it lets me I don't have admin rights so I might not be able to write here looks like I can so I'm gonna make a temp directory on the C drive I'm going to make a new PowerShell document let's start with a text and yes let's make sure defenders turn off I don't know if uh, defender will detect this or not cool everything is off so we're in good shape we're also going to say show me file name extensions because then I can just do something like this print nightmare.ps1 and then I should be able to open this with notepad paste all that in and we've got it so if we copy this path come back to our PowerShell window we can just change into our temp directory and in here we have our print nightmare script so I'm going to import it, and you could do import module or whatever. I'm just going to do a period and then the name of the script, and really we have to reference it like that, I believe. And that should import it, except for the fact that running scripts is disabled. Um, so I'm going to do this instead. I'm just going to say PowerShell EP bypass, and that's just saying open up a new PowerShell window, set the execution policy to bypass. That should allow us to run scripts. Now we can import this again. And then we should be in good shape. Now let's just try to run it. Print nightmare.ps1. Now remember, by default, the payload said it's going to create a local admin. So let's see what happens. Doesn't look like anything happened. Um, let's run net user again. And we still don't see anything. So this is when reading the documentation is really helpful because after you import the module, you're actually going to run this command invoke nightmare. Uh, so there's a function inside that, and that's what we want to run. So instead, we'll do invoke nightmare. And cool, I hit tab autocomplete, it showed up. That means that we definitely have the module imported. We hit enter, and check that out. So it says, using new admin with a password. A password, it created a payload here. So it created its own DLL file that does that, that does this right here. And it looks like everything was successful and it was able to clean up after itself and delete the payload. Let's just check that by running that user. Boom. Now we have a new account that did not exist before. Look, it's not here. It's when we ran that user before running the script, this didn't exist. So let's sign out. And let's see if we can sign in as that user account. So that was other user and this is going to be a local account admin and the password memory not good uh, it is password with a zero and an add sign capital P try this again check it out we get a welcome we get a hi that's awesome that's exactly what we wanted to see it's the first time we're signing into Windows 10 so it's got to go through and set up our desktop uh, but this is very, very promising that that user account really did get created. The only thing we didn't check is whether or not it's in the local administrator group. So we'll get it a second, see if, uh, if it shows up in that group or not. Open up a PowerShell admin window. We're allowed through the UAC prompt. We do a net user. Grab this guy. Net user on ourselves. And we're administrator on the box. So this is awesome, and we're running an administrator PowerShell. So, I mean, what, that took all of two seconds. Once you landed on a box and you had uh, access to either execute code in general or sign in as a particular user, not hard in any way to get system level access with this vulnerability. 
So that's the first one. Let's take this a step further and let's look at the other proof of concept that allows us to do remote code execution. All right, hold up. Yeah, I know I just said that we're gonna go look at the remote code execution, but uh, I realized this video is already 10 minutes long. So I'm gonna split this up into two parts. Both will be released in the same day. So if you're watching this, part two is already available. Go check it out if you have time. Link is in the description. Um, but I wanted to kind of close out here with some mitigation strategies and the exploit we just looked at, the PowerShell one, it doesn't talk about mitigation, but the, the second script does. And uh, it's pretty simple. All you have to really do is disable the print spooler. Now, hopefully, if, you, if you're watching this two, three, four weeks in the future from when this was released, you can just run Windows updates and a patch will be available and, and you won't have to take this step. Um, but as of today, as of time of recording, if you're watching this on day of release, you're going to need to disable your print spooler on your critical infrastructure in order to protect yourself from this. So I actually show off in the next video in part two um, that the remote code execution doesn't work against the domain controller if the domain controller doesn't have the print spooler running. So if you wanna see that, come check out part two, link will be in the description. But again, all you have to do to mitigate this is disable your print spooler for now. Um, now obviously, if you're doing that on a print server, that could be problematic for you. Good news is this doesn't affect local printers. So if you have like a USB printer or something like that, your your end users can still print off that as a, as a workaround in the meantime, because um, that doesn't necessarily require the print spooler to be running. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful and uh, I will check you guys out over at part two. And yeah, we'll see you next time.